Hi, it's Katie, and this is another episode of the Nursepreneur Podcast. On today's episode, we have Arcelia Pompilio, who is a nurse out of California, who has held various roles, such as pediatric nurse, charge nurse, and PICU, NICU, mother baby nursery, uh, who became a pediatric nurse practitioner, nurse consultant, and a nurse educator, freelance writer, author. She wrote and produced her own solo show called The Nurse and the Hypochondriacs, and currently produces uh, that show Nurses and Hypochondriacs as a storytelling show. She runs the company called Rogue Nurse Media, and I'm so excited to talk to her about what it is that she does. So thank you, Arcelia, for being with us, and tell us how you came up with this. Well, (laughs) um, uh, way back in 2008, uh, I was teaching, I was working at Children's Hospital as an NP, in a place called surgical admitting. Uh, So we would uh, do all the uh, health histories and assessments for the anesthesiologists and clear the patients before they went into surgery. Um, Kind of redundant, boring, but now um, I just had another project on my desk and I found uh, how important that job was uh, and how we're gonna be replaced by AI. Um, Fascinating, that's another whole topic. But anyway, I used to tell a lot of stories on my unit and uh, I used to date a lot and I used to attract hypochondriacs, you know, men who had issues, wanted to be healed, you know, uh, and, uh, and they were kind of wacky stories, but they were very, very true. And so what I found is I had an audience, like we'd have nurses who would float to our unit, you know, to do the pre-ops and stuff. And they would always come back. They'd be like, hey, do you got another story? Hey, do you got another story? Got any dating stories? So um, I I was really, you know, I didn't know where my career was going because I I kept trying to get promoted, doing something else, doing more management stuff, and it just wasn't working. So I was very frustrated, and I always wanted to write. And I found, and I didn't want to go to like UCLA Extension or anything like that. So I found a boutique writing school uh, here in Los Angeles where this woman was teaching uh, out of her loft in downtown LA. And it was the funky area where it's called Truckerville. Now it's been redone. So that was the arts district. Still the arts district, but now it's like more hipster and nice. Before it was very grunge, you know, super cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so she was teaching these art cl- these writing classes out of her loft, and she had um, playwrights come and teach us. Uh, she had screenwriters. She had um, all kinds of people, comedians coming to teach us, uh, and we had a chef cooking for us, and it was amazing. Here you are in a loft, sitting on a you know soft, fun couch. Uh, with the fireplace overlooking downtown Los Angeles. You know, you can't get better than that when you're doing classes. (laughs) Yeah, so she she would teach in the Amherst method, which is uh, there's no negative feedback. I mean, it's all very positive to get you to write. So it's all what you liked and remembered about people's pieces. And and the whole methodology is just to get you to write because once you start being negative to somebody, they're not gonna wanna write and divulge like their personal stories and stuff like that, you know? So it was a way to create and craft those stories. So I got hooked on these classes and I became a voracious student. Um, And they really helped me uh, through my journey because I was so frustrated with my job that I kind of had this creative outlet. And so I would go to like writing retreats and I met so many different, and here in Los Angeles, it's amazing, you know? Plethora of I was meeting like producers. One of my good friends was producing the Housewives show of Beverly Hills, and she ended up publishing two books. I mean, people who were taking these classes actually produced a lot. So I took a one-person show class um, because one day I was writing at a retreat, and my friend, who happened to be a HIPAA attorney, and one of my writing partners, he was like, "You sure do date a lot of hypochondriacs?" And I'm like, "That's it." The nurse and the hypochondriacs. And so I started writing it. I took a one-person show class. Um, and I did my one-person show. I did like, yeah, three performances. I didn't know what I was doing. I never produced a show before. I saw this place that was uh, accepting one-person shows that were eclectic and new. And I went in and I pitched to her. You had to do a one-sentence pitch. And I go, uh, so what was my pitch? 
Um, so I'm talking to this guy, his name is T-Bone and he starts telling me about his penis and she's like, sold, sold, you got it. You got your show. And I was like, okay. Uh, and it was about this guy I had dated, uh, very platonically who would, you know, he would try to relate to me through his medical issues. And he was telling me about this time he got his penis for most. And I was like, oh my God. And it was this whole journey where I was working in surgical admitting. I happened to be working, uh, it was a urology day. And I asked one of the fellows and he told me the whole, you know, he gave me this great uh, tutorial uh, on how a penis gets for most. And oh, and how, what was it that goes on a penis? Oh, I have to go back to my notes. Um, there is there is something you put on it to help the phimosis come off and i i have to go back but anyway <laughs> it's something very absurd you know and um i went ahead and asked uh this re this uh fellow and he kind of gave me this whole explanation so it kind of got very educational you know into this very obscure provocative story that uh, I also explained what a nurse practitioner was, why nobody understood me and stuff like that. And I had all these writers come on, like uh, my HIPAA friend, uh, my friend, my producer friend from the housewives. And also I also befriended um, a, uh, an editor from a publishing house too, who was very funny and helped me with jokes and stuff. So it was great. All of a sudden I had this team, <laughs> you know, out of nowhere. I was like, Oh my God, it's so Hollywood. But, uh, yeah, so from there, I kind of put it to bed for a while, and uh, because this was back in 2011, but I did it 2012, and um, I, uh, in 2015, one of my friends had done uh, the year previous uh, a one-person show, and she goes, you should do your show again, you should do your show, and enter it into the Hollywood Fringe Festival that we have here, which is a festival that almost anybody can go and produce a play, and they have classes and uh all kinds of stuff to really help you put a production together if you have no experience. It's very fascinating. Now they have about almost 500 productions. It's, it's actually starting now. It goes through the summer for 20 days and it's, it's an incredible um, event. So I entered it there because I knew there were other people that had stories as well. And I was telling stories in the store. Los Angeles has a huge storytelling community. It's kind of dwindling now. Uh, we, there were a lot of shows, almost a couple of years ago that were being produced and you know, we were getting great attendance, but now there's so many events in Los Angeles that it's really hard to get people to come to your shows, uh, especially if they're little and, and self-produced, you know, and it, at a coffee shop or at a bar. And um, yeah, so, you know, slowly I got, it's like the build it and they will come scenario, you know, from field of dreams. And um, I got all these people coming out of the woodwork telling me, I got this story. I got this story. And it was medically based stories, you know, and these people, it was kind of like they needed to heal. Um, and we do have it as a, there is a comedic flair to that, to the storytelling because I didn't like going to watch these like Ted talks that were so depressing. And I would go to the moth here in LA and these stories were so, I go, I can't listen to these cancer stories. This is, I would literally walk out. I go, not another cancer story, you know? And, and I would walk out. And so anybody that would come on who were comedians or very funny storytellers, you know, that was just the gimmick to put something that's sad, but kind of giving it a twist to make it happy, you know, and I started to do research on empathy. Okay. So we had produced five shows at the fringe, the great storytellers come on from all walks of life, um, which is on the video. I have a, a few of those uh, eclectic, interesting storytellers on there and i would also get nurses the nurses were very hard to pull on because they were afraid they were going to lose their jobs kind of conservative here in california nobody wants to talk about you know what they do um so yes yeah, started doing research we have about 13 shows we did two shows in denver in 2017 and 2017 was like the last time that i produced um a live storytelling show because then we went to podcast format the podcast format is a little bit different because we, um, I, I mean, we, we spent a, a little bit of time trying to find our voice. Um, and, uh, you know, first the, we wanted to get the storytellers on telling their medically, uh, 
their medical stories and stuff. We try to make it very fun and, and put a lot of history in it because I give uh, CEs as well for nurses. Um, and, and then we kind of change it because I, some guests that would come on would start their own, you know, they weren't healthcare professionals, so they would start their own, but without that comedic flair. So I told my sound engineer, um, who's produced a lot of shows, he's also a comedian himself. I was like, we need a different, you know, I need to be on, be on my game with this because people are starting to copy and it's not very authentic to, you know, I, I just want to be whatever. And so then we changed it and we started doing hot topics in healthcare and pulling on these uh, storytellers, uh, comedians, actors, activists, um, artists, filmmakers to talk about if they did something in healthcare, they would uh, bring in their creative artistic flair to it. Uh, and yeah, and it's been fun. I think we have about 37, 38 episodes so far, kind of. And so, cause it's only me and my sound engineer and I'm trying to pull on more um, volunteers and stuff to help. But we were able to get an advertiser. Um, I've gotten a grant from the Puffin Foundation. And so because I keep jumping back and forth to clinic, <laughs> to supplement what I need to, you know, we're, we're go we're moving forward. So the whole idea of rogue nurse mania, uh, was to give patients and nurses a voice and also show this empathy factor because as the research shows, um, you know, there's a negative and it's like, nobody's feeling empathy for anybody anymore. We're living in a narcissistic world, narcissistic culture. And, even the Cleveland Clinic uh, just the other day, I, I believe last week, had a whole um, conference on uh, innovation and empathy, which I was like, oh my God, I wish I would have got, it was innovation, I'm not, it, something like that, innovation and empathy, innovation and patient something. Um, I have the articles in, I, I, and they were talking about that the CNO was like, yeah, um, we need to change the way we talk to patients. There's no empathy. And I was like, oh my God, I've been trying to push this since 2015 with my research, with the surveys I've been doing on the show, because we ask on the show, do you feel empathy for the storytellers? And it's all yes, you know, um, and, and stuff. And, and it's because we when I put the class together, I did hire some really master storytellers and we went to a bunch of shows and I would say, you know, what makes this person a good storyteller? What is it that they're drawing us in? They're connecting us. What, what's going on there? And so we really started looking at that and going through storytelling books and, and stuff like that. It was very fascinating. And it's all about that connection. It's all about the eye contact. It's all about, you know, how you stand. And are you really listening to your patient? Are you really being open? Do you really want to help them and stuff? So, so that's what we found out. Yeah. That, I mean, everything. I mean, oh my God, you just said so much. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a lot. It's very overwhelming because it's so much. Um, and yeah, so that's, that component and then we have the storytelling classes which i started doing yeah i love that i love that aspect yeah so we um i i started teaching them in 2017 and i would teach them at my friend's house which is she has a very eclectic large home with a pool and i wanted it to be a very relaxing environment kind of taking these healthcare professionals out of the hospital in a very relaxed state so they're able to open up and it's still taught in the Amherst method, um, you know, and, and we, you know, we developed this course and, and people do so good and so amazing. Like I'm able to, some of them do have some writing background, you know, which does help, but I've had, I had a, a nurse who, forensic nurse worked in a prison, zero writing background, voracious reader, always wanted to write. She has great stories. She did amazing you know, um, on, in one of my classes, I mean, cause I throw them up on stage after like we have a, a show that's part of it. We do at my friend's house. I just got the mic and, and everything, you know, and it's like a real show. And I, I bring in an audience, like whoever's available, my friends here come watch my class and it's great. They do amazing. You know, I let them have paper because usually in storytelling it's moth style. So it's, it's, it's unscripted and you just go there and you know your story and you tell it and stuff um and you go through the formula in your head and everything but yeah so now i'm moving to um online 
with the classes. So I'm looking at some platforms and getting ready to launch and I'm going over my syllabus at the moment. So. Yeah, no, I, I really think that's huge because the, the nurses, I mean, they have so many good stories and it, it's yeah. funny like over the years, this has been like a stream that I've always kind of wanted to follow, but it, it just yeah. wasn't my real, real, real passion. I'm passionate about other people doing it, but it, you know, it's not something. So I had, you know, back in the early 2000s, wanted to follow the narrative medicine and, and yep. kind of like, Realm. Columbia Columbia University has yeah yeah, yeah absolutely it's a little it's a little bit different I think there ours is more laid back and relaxed yeah well, that's what I would want to say like because in healthcare we always tend to be like so formal and yeah. so aloof and stand back over here we care about you but from over here you know? yeah yeah and so that's the thing that Columbia that you know because I looked at their program and stuff and it, it was a little bit of a turnoff for me because the way I learned to write I really bring the creative and this is what people are looking for now hmm. you know these agencies i just did an ad campaign um for this creative agency and it was for this tech emr ehr nlp system ai it was like really crazy i, I mean i had to do this intense research and i was able to pull from my storytellers who do like script writing to kind of go over this because we needed to come up with a campaign that had to do with data monster. Like there's an overwhelming abundance of data in these systems. How can we make, you know, it, it, so they want a data monster because this system is now supposed to pull this data and make it easier for everybody so you could spend more time with your patients, right? And so I was like, you know, and I pulled one of my friends and he's going through monster genre. And he goes, yeah, it's like Frankenstein. You know, he has all these parts and we put them together and he sounded like a good idea. And then he got out of control. I was like, oh my God, you're a genius. And then he kept going in another one and another one and another one. All the, I was like, how do you know all these monster like analogies? And, and it was, it was brilliant, you know? So, but this is what there, everybody wants to do the flashy, how am I going to grab you? Cause there's so much competition now. So yeah. this dry stuff is no longer, it's going to be going through the wayside, you know? And even if you go to conferences and you see people who are giving talks, I, I went to one, um, Dr. Mona, she's, uh, the Flint, the water crisis, you know, uh, she spoke at nap nap and, uh, she was amazing. I mean, she opened up like, she goes, you know, I was talking to one of my patients and I asked her like, um, so like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And she goes five, she wants to, she's four. So she wants to live until she's five because you know, it, it was amazing. But she automatically, I connected to her. I'm like, yeah, I ask kids all the time. How old are you? And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> she's brilliant, you know, but she, you know, she's coming on my podcast as well. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what people want. People want entertainment, you know, they don't want the, yeah. But you know it's it's gone right so and i've been pitching it since 2015 they're like no you need to be conservative i'm like yep nobody wants that <laughs> no i mean there's enough of that out there that if yeah. people really want that they can go get it but uh you know there's not that kind of refreshing authentic like tell me how it really is uh and that's something that i think has been even like the stories that have been out there for nursing they're very dry yeah they're, yeah, they're very cleaned up and, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, the, the stories are interesting, they're fine, but they're not, um, you know, they're, they're just a little too nicely wrapped and that's not how nursing is at all. So Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, and I was telling this company that I worked with, um, I had a, we did a show in Denver and I, I lost Nap Nap, who is my national pediatric nurse practitioner group. Cause I was like, come to the show, you know, cause we um, did it while the conference was going, you know, and um, they're like, so they came, this ultra conservative woman was there and she's part of their media. She's the media lady. Um, and this guy came on stage and started talking about a story. He's a comedian. He looked so Denver too. He looked very South Park. It was hilarious. And he told this story about when he was 20 years old, he got diagnosed with a tumor in his spine. Thought he was gonna die. Like the parents called the priest, all this stuff. They thought he was gonna be paralyzed. He's in the hospital. He has a catheter. His girlfriend comes in and starts giving him fellatio with the catheter in there. And he starts doing it. He starts showing what it looks like with the microphone, you know, because it has a cord. And I'm just dying. I'm like, okay, no more advertise. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm dead. 
you know, I'm I am now blacklisted, you know, <laughs> and um, it was I, worth it. Like, the next day, well, yeah, and and the next day I'm like, oh my god, I'm like this, and my friends are like, that was the funny, that was the funniest part. That guy was so funny, and he is a comedian. I mean, he is a professional comedian. He has his own uh, YouTube channel, and he goes around and does. He's just wacky, and I'm just like dying, you know. And um, but everybody was, like, hey, you're the, you know, it was a funny show last night, you know. But so this year our conference was in New Orleans. And that was back in 2017. And I saw the woman again. I was like, hey, so you're Michelle, you know, um, you know, uh, you should do a podcast and, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, but remember, I came to your storytelling show. And I was like, wait, what? You, you were there? What? What? Storytelling? She goes, yeah. What? I go, oh, the guy in the catheter? She goes, yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> and she's super ultra in this, like, three, you know, conservative suit, you know, like a Chanel type suit. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, that's what I think that, you know, nursing, they, they tend to lack the confidence to be what they really are. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that's a, that's an excellent point that you bring there, you know? Yeah, so we, we show up, you know, overcompensating and, you know, nurses love to have fun. Like that's nursing. Nurses are fun. Oh, yeah. They're exciting. They're, you know, energetic. And yet we yeah, have yeah. this space of like, I'm super serious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, um, we're getting ready to, I have a couple of nurses who are interested in franchising the show. We were talking in Austin and New York. Um, I think the nurse in New York, the nurse in New York is very much like me and she's also, she's already doing storytelling. So she's very easy to launch, and she's an educator. So she's really easy to launch into it. So, um, once she takes the class, then we go with the uh, production in New York and see how that's going to go uh, and stuff. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to be my first test subject to see how that franchising goes. And then we see. That's so, awesome. Yeah. But I think now is the time in 2015, it was still kind of like nobody was really paying attention. And I spoke to one of my um, mentors who, uh, has done lots of storytelling shows and stuff. And he said that something happened, you know, after the elections, people were asleep, but it was really the end of 2018 that people started to wake up uh, and, and started to want to have a voice. And, and, I, and I really think in the nursing profession as well, you know, I think nurses are just tired of how they're being treated and want more respect. And so they're kind of stepping up to the plate more, right. you know. So. Yeah. And it's, it's storytelling is definitely something that I've tried to incorporate into my own, like just emailing my list or emailing or just yeah. posting in Facebook. Like I don't tell them like, da, 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 da. I'm like, you know what? I broke up with my boyfriend. And exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because that's real, but that's real. But then that fosters connection, you know, people want to hear that and stuff. And I started noticing that with my one person show because I was like, yeah, I can't lose weight. I don't know why. And I'm shoving cupcakes in my mouth. <laughs> or just cracking up you know and and in my yeah I had a couple of pe friends come up they're like yeah me too I could relate when you said that thing about the cupcakes and you're you know I, I got in and so that then that's what we're all about as human beings you know there's a loneliness epidemic going on here in Los Angeles it's crazy you know yeah very Absolutely. very fun. But Absolutely. Yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah no I'm really ready to like it's taken a long time and and now I'm like I'm on it and I'm getting these really interesting projects. Like I said, that ad campaign, I was like, this is what I was wanting to do. And it just showed up in my lap because I was dating the COO of this company, you know, and, and we kind of broke up and, and he's like, Hey, do you want this project? And he just like threw it at me. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> your consolation prize <laughs> yeah. and, and I was like awesome I get okay you know so that worked yeah stuff, so yeah that's funny yeah no I, I've just uh, I put together nursepreneurs to help nurses to put their businesses together because there's so many nurses out there that I think are just burnt out like this is an option yeah. for you, burnt out and need something else yeah, and that's why I want to really try to get nurses into journalistic writing as well, because writing is a great, I mean, it's not going to pay you a nursing salary, okay, but still, it's like, look, I got pulled into that ad campaign, you know, I, I mean, I, I made a nice chunk of money, right. I made 
you know, it did take me a lot of time, but I, I made equivalent to what I'm making clinic. Right. You know, so there is opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity that we need to tap into. And the people that are, are doing these consultings aren't, aren't healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. Majority of the journalistic writers, probably over 90% have no healthcare experience. I mean, I found that out in my research and I was like, what is going on there? And you can read, I can read, I know that they have no experience because there's right. something missing, right. you know, there's a depth that's missing. And like my whole vision is to start getting nursing schools on top of this and teaching this or in teaching an entrepreneurial component so that when their nurses get burnt out, they have something else to go to and put all their expertise in. Like they don't know, nobody knows, right. you know? Right, and, and that's what I wanted to do is like sad. pull together all these role models yeah, so people yeah. can see all the various things that we're doing. And even like what you said with uh, the journalist, I mean, health coaching is taught by random ladies. Yes! So I'm just like, what? You know, this yes. is a missing field. Yes, you know, I, I had someone come up to me and they're like, oh, you need to be trained as a health coach. And I go, go fuck yourself. I mean, sorry. <laughs> but I was just like, like, seriously? I have a master's degree. I teach people all the time about stuff. Yeah. I do research. Why do I have to go get a, a you know, a, I got to go pay you to train me as a coach? Yeah, you know, I just wrote I, a, I just wrote a blog yeah. post on that, it would, you know, and I'm like, why health coaching is a complete waste of money for nurses. I don't need it. You're a nurse. <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. people are doing things that have zero degrees. It's, you know, it, it's like my friend, he's a Kundalini Yogi and he was like, there's this woman in London that's his friend and she's like this coach and she even reached out to me, I could coach you. And I was like, for what? I mean, I go, what, what, what are you gonna do to me that I haven't already done for myself? I mean, not to be narcissistic about it, but I mean, what, what do you got? Uh, what's your background? Oh, I used to work in the corporate sector. Okay, doing what? It's very blunt. They're like, no. Yeah, they're I used to work in corporate too. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, make me help. Me coach. too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was pretty I lame. Yeah. I did a lot of PowerPoints. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of sales docs. Um, you yeah. Know, and stuff. But, I had a nurse in Philly that wanted to do the show. I have to get back to her once we launch the classes. Yeah. But she was really into storytelling too. She was uh, a um, hospice nurse. Okay. Yeah. If you guys set up in New York or if I'm ever out in LA, I would love to, you know, come to your shows or, or yeah. see what you guys are doing. Or you yeah. Come yeah, no, I could come, you know what, that's the idea. If you want me to come there, I am all for coming out, you know, and, and producing a show and connecting and um, collaborating. Uh, I was talking to Alabama University, one of their our show in 2017, a nurse came out um, and she is now getting her DMP at Alabama University and she pitched it to the, um, the dean there. And I said, I go, you know, I am all happy for coming out. We could even do, because she was like, how much are your classes? I go, we could even do visiting professor if you guys could get me something, you know, as, as long as I can compensate my lodging and my airfare, I'm cool with that, you know. Uh, and, and producing the show um, and, and stuff. And, and if somebody would like to keep it going and, and everything, um, part of our franchising will be offering consultation services that you can call me and have a meeting with me about how things are going. And then we can have general meetings um, once we get our whole team of um, nurse producers who are doing these to talk about you know, um, their shows and what's going on you know, and, and production and stuff, because it is, uh, let me tell you, I learned from doing nothing. And I, I, in here in Hollywood, I, it's narcissistic capital of the world. I got yelled at by, by uh, comedians who thought they were better than me. Cause I, and they kept saying, you're just a nurse. You don't have any experience. I've done A, B, and C. And um, yeah, so it, it was quite a journey. <laughs> you that's know, awesome. you're but, right. You're like, that's right. Yeah. I am just a nurse and I'm going to keep Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're actually going to produce, we did a mental health show in September, um, and I did it in tandem with my friend Chris, uh, and it was very interesting, and so now he wants to do another mental health health um, specific show uh, with people talking about their medications, and I was like, okay, you know, so we're like, yeah, those are great. It's, a, it's such a great idea, I love it. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm thinking of like another opportunity here, because storytelling is so important 
important in marketing. Yeah. Like, I oh think, yeah, that's um, where it, that's what the the huge thing is about. You know, is storytelling and marketing. I, I used to work for AstraZeneca. I was hired on um, as they were hiring all these nurse consultants, which was a BS position. Uh, because they felt that nurses could sell these products and speak to the nurses to push the doctors to order these medications and to um, they wanted the patients to be more compliant. So in the transition of care, because that's where they were finding that patients were no longer taking their meds. And uh, this, so that's where they were seeing their drop off in the transition. So we were hired as a transitional care nurse, but then they changed our um, title to like nurse consultant educator or something like that, right? Uh, and, and so I guess through their research, they found out it worked, you know, and they even in their um, handouts, we had these video digital videos that we would give the patients. And it was this nurse talking to this older patient named Joe about how he needed to be compliant with in his meds and his diet and stuff like that. So they said, so it's amazing how much money pharma, that's, I, that's a whole other, I know. oh I my know. God, it was such a, an, a weird, it was like wild, Mr. Wild Toad's wild ride, you know, I used to work at Disneyland too. Um, and it was insane. Uh, the amount of money on, they spent on marketing. and But it was like my um, free um, internship, actually. I got I got a paid internship into how to market, you know, because that's all they do. That's all mm -hmm. our classes were about marketing and advertising, how you, how you say certain things to people to draw them in so that, you know, and that also helped me with the shows as well uh, because they're so good. I mean, oh. It's amazing. Like I had books that I, they, they would say, you need to buy these books. And, and our um, sales, oh, our sales managers who are not nurses were so honest. If we said the wrong thing or shifted from the script, they'd be like, no, you, you know, and they would ding us for it. It was really, it was really, <laughs> well, oh. but listen, like weird with the importance of storytelling, you know, so I run this uh, high level mastermind with nurses that are setting up businesses and stuff. And yeah, you know, what I think it would be awesome, um, like if you would be interested in just talking about, you know, how to incorporate like storytelling in oh, yeah. marketing. And then uh -huh. if you have something at the end that you'd say, well, you know, if you want to learn more, you can join my workshop. You can yeah. This, you yeah. Know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like really launching these workshops I have, um, since August, I just, it's my platform that I'm looking for. And, um, but yeah, I would totally love to do that. And I could, you know, um, set up the, you know, if you let me know when you're going to do this so that I can go ahead and set up my own webinar and um, put those together. I have a ton, let me tell you, I've studied so much of this and I'm writing a book called Nurse Out of the Box because I really do go out of my box, you know, to um, interact with these people. And I'm very lucky that I live in Los Angeles because there's so much that you can so many different types of people that you can connect with and and you know and they everybody's hot on healthcare now everybody is running on this healthcare train especially tech which is really scaring me and that's where we need to push the nurses to get on that train so mm -hmm. that they can maneuver that industry into doing something good because as we've seen with theranos you know which i was obsessed with you do you know about theranos and elizabeth holmes how she was um, the Silicon Valley queen, developed this um, little machine for blood draws, like a drop of blood uh, to test for like thousands of um, medical uh, diseases. And it was a total hoax, okay? She had people on her board who were healthcare professionals who left, okay? Uh, who said, this is bogus, it's never going to work, and they left, she brought in billions of dollars. You know, she had, she was on the cover of Forbes, uh, you know, her father used to work for Enron, so that's where she got her corruption from. So, but her, her story is fascinating, you know, on how she had nothing and she created, you know, she thought, she was telling people she understood this healthcare uh, area was such an innovator was very young she was a great talker she tried to talk like she was Steve Jobs and had this whole persona which people went for you know this is what I'm saying people love that that whole uh, acting thing you know we're, we're so trained for that that they they bought it she had no medical background she didn't know what she was talking about and and she was you know 
people were, she got into Walgreens. She got into Walgreens where they were doing these blood tests and they were sending the tests out to, um, to test with another company and not with the, this thing that she developed. I, I mean, she even had like, this was the funniest thing. She tested all her workers and she was like, oh yeah, 20% of you have syphilis, you know? And it was- <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know? and, and so one of her workers outed her cause he's like, you were running, you know? And they kept telling her, this is not right. This is not, she's like, it's, it is right. It is, she's a huge nar- sociopath, you know? And it, it was it was insane, and now she's facing twenty years in federal prison. So, um, yeah, it's a fascinating story. I had um, a comedian come on and do a parody with me, which was hilarious. And I was like, "Come on, come on! I have all these questions that I'd love to ask the real Elizabeth Holmes." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's very fun. So um, this. Oh awesome. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, say thank you for doing this podcast with me and if anybody wants to find you um where can they go to find you on the internet so my website is roguenursemedia.com so it's www.roguenursemedia.com i'm also on twitter at nurses and hypocon i'm also on instagram under rogue nurse media and Facebook, you can join our Nurses and Hypochondriacs storytelling page. Um, and the podcast, of course, Nurses and Hypochondriacs, we're on iTunes and Podbean. So, right. yeah. 